Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Tell me you're ready. Tell me you're ready. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm David Burroughs, and this is episode number 35. And thanks to all of you for taking the time to watch the show every week. We're getting bigger and better, and it's thanks to all of you. And remember, there's only two rules around here. Take the time to subscribe and share with five new friends every week so we can keep the show growing and keep bringing you bigger and better things. All right. Well, lots of many things happening, of course, with the Canada Day celebrations happening this past weekend. Hope you had a great long weekend. And uh, there was lots to do around Sarnia, as always, on Canada Day. 145 years. Happy birthday, Canada. We were down at the uh, Canada Day Parade, and we got some footage of that coming up a little bit later on in the show. Also, we uh, had a really neat uh, time with a band Lighthouse. You remember Lighthouse? Sunny, sunny days, and a whole lot more. And we got some really cool footage of them performing down at Centennial Park, as well as a very special and exclusive only right here on the show, an interview with Paul Hofford, a member of Lighthouse, one of the original founding members of the band Lighthouse. And uh, Paul took the time to talk to us and had a really neat interview. We'll be showing that a little bit later on in the show. Before we jump into things, though, I do want to just take a moment, say a special hello and a special thank you to Gary Connors and Steve Dumont from The Eagle, 103.3 FM. Uh, Stevie D and Gary have their Playfair Music Hour every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock on the 103.3 FM. And uh, we got a phone call, and uh, they were saying hello, and we were talking on the phone to Gary and Steve, and I think uh, Jeff Black was in there and they're in the background as well. Anyway, we had a fun conversation. They were asking about the show, and we just had a whole lot of fun. So I uh, wasn't able to capture that here. It was uh, came up kind of last minute. But once again, Stevie D and uh, Gary Connors from 103.3 FM, thank you for taking the time to... Uh, Give me a call. All right. Well, uh, there's lots going to be on this show, but we're going to jump right into some things. We're very excited about how we got started uh, this past week. On Thursday evening, myself and uh, my friend Jennifer, we were down at Bridges Restaurant. Where's that? I've heard of that. Yeah, Bridges in the Holiday Inn down on Venetian Boulevard in Point Edward. And they've got a beautiful patio out on the back there, and it's facing on the golf course. And now they have live entertainment. Every Thursday, open mic night down at Bridges Restaurant, and it's 6 to 9 p.m., and then on Fridays from 7 to 10 p.m., they're also going to have some live entertainment there for you. This past Thursday, we were down there, and we caught Gabby Dockstater, and she was performing and uh, doing a very nice job of performing down there, and it was a beautiful night, and we had a couple of drinks and uh, some stuff to eat. Great food, by the way. So we're going to show you some of the footage there right now with Gabby Dockstater, who was playing down there. And uh, then we'll come back and we'll tell you more about what's happening down at Bridges Restaurant, located in the Holiday Inn and uh, Venetian Boulevard there. So take a look at this footage, and then we'll be back to talk more about it. Oh, 
Once again, great job there. Gabby Dockstater uh, running the open mic this past Thursday. It's uh, every Thursday again from 6 to 9 p.m. Open mic. So bring your guitars or you can use one of theirs or whatever. Bring your keyboards or whatever you want or just go up and sing and have some fun. But that's, again, every Thursday night at Bridges Restaurant located in the Holiday Inn on Venetian Boulevard. And that's 6 to 9 p.m. Also, 7 o'clock to 10 p.m. every Friday, there's going to be uh, some live entertainment there. In fact, this Thursday coming up, Gabby Dockstater We'll be back there again on uh, July the 5th to run the open mic. And Friday night on July the 6th, uh, the Jamie Lee duo will be down there from 7 to 10 p.m. So check that out. Check out their menu. It's a beautiful evening down there. And we want to thank Bridges for allowing us to uh, come in and enjoy the music that was happening down there. And we'll be talking more every week about Bridges. And we'll keep you updated as to what is happening down there. Speaking of which, on the following week, uh, July the 10th, which is a Tuesday uh, will be the night that they're doing the open mic again with uh, Gabby. Uh, they're just changing it up a little bit because of Bayfest, and uh, they're pretty close to Bayfest, so it might get loud there. So July the 10th will be uh, the Tuesday next week for the open mic. All right, well, we've got more to show you here, but first got to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to have some Canada Day footage for you. So check this out, and we'll be right back. Hello everybody, David Burroughs here with a very special and exciting offer for all of you here on the show. Imagine home phone service, home satellite service, and home high-speed internet service all bundled together for about $80 a month. That's right, about $80 a month gives you all three services and it's only available from our special offer here on the show. Want more? Hey, call up Gary Smith from Bell and tell him you watch the show with David Burroughs, get the services, and your first three months are free. Simple as that. Call the number on the screen. First three month services are free and only $80 a month for all three services. You can't get a better deal than that, folks. And that deal is only available by calling the number on the screen and by telling them you watch the show with David Burroughs. All right, welcome back to the show. Once again, uh, lots to show you, so we're just going to keep rolling along here. Canada Day, of course, the big celebration this past weekend. Once again, we hope you had a safe and happy Canada Day. Uh, we got down there, uh, myself and Jennifer, and we took the kids down to uh, the park to see the parade. And I love going to see the parade every year. It's my birthday every Canada Day, too, so I, I kind of like to make sure that I get around town, if you will, to celebrate my birthday as well as Canada Day. So we did. We took the camera. Uh, got a great uh, view right at the entrance to Canaterra Park, and we got there just in time for the parade to begin. And we took some footage, and you'll notice in there, well, the bagpipers, of course, they started off the parade. You'll see them. And uh, our friends from Canadians for Family Law Reform had a float in there as well, and uh, they had the tunes rocking, as well as the Bayfest float was in there. And you're going to see all of that and a whole lot more. So check out Canada Day Parade, and then we'll be back with more. All right, here on the show and uh, getting ready for the Canada Day events, the parade, just getting ready to start. You can probably hear the bagpipes in the background, and we're going to take some footage and show you here on the show. Take a look.
simple plan. I always love the Canada Day celebrations. It's a lot of fun, and uh, there were a lot of floats in there. We couldn't get them all in there, but uh, we did want to take the time to show some of that to you. Uh, so you were probably down there, and if you weren't down there, you missed a really neat parade. So uh, congratulations to all the people who put the float in there take the time to do that. It was very enjoyable, and uh, thanks for putting that on. Okay, so we're going to take another quick break. In fact, we got to do the Cheeky Monkey Weekend Update because there's lots happening around town, and we want to show some of that to you here right now. So check out the Cheeky Monkey Weekend Update, and then we'll be back with more footage from Canada Day. Cheeky Monkey, the greatest CD store in town. Cheeky Monkey, the greatest CD store in town. All right, welcome back. And again, that's your Cheeky Monkey Weekend Update. I also want to say thank you to uh, Marianne and Roland, the owners of Cheeky Monkey. And again, if you haven't been in there, it's located down at the corner of Christina and Cromwell, a record store and a whole lot more. they got vinyl in there. They've got DVDs. There's um, um, art and photography from local artists. And it's just a really neat store. And I guarantee you, if you go in there and they've never seen you, they'll be saying hello and, and they'll you'll be making a new friend just by going down to Cheeky Monkey. Also want to say uh, thanks to uh, Mary Ann. We are now featured on the Cheeky Monkey website, which is located at CheekyMonkeySarnia.ca. And you'll be able to see the episodes posted on there on the blog, the show with David Burroughs blog, if you will. Mary Ann's put that up there and that was very kind of her to do that. But we are now featured on the Cheeky Monkey website. So take the time to check it out. There's lots of events, uh, very uh, filled calendar, if you will, a lot of events happening in the Sarnia area. And again, that website should be on your screen, CheekyMonkeySarnia.ca. Thank you again, Marianne and Roland, for all your support here on the show. And, and not just here on the show, Marianne and Roland uh, support a lot of the independent uh, local talent. So if, if you are, are an independent and you haven't been down to Cheeky Monkey, I uh, would encourage you to go down and see Marianne and talk to her about what you're doing independently with your music. And I guarantee you she will take the time to talk to you and do what she can to help support uh, your independent music, if you will. So once again, thank you, Cheeky Monkey. All right, well, we've got to talk about some more things that are happening. Of course, the Bridge Bash is happening uh, this Friday and Saturday. It is going to be a rocking good time because there's so many local bands going to be happening down there. And it all starts Friday. The gates open 10 o'clock in the morning, both Friday and Saturday. Coming up on the Friday, Rumblefish will start off the night at 6 o'clock. Last Call is going to be in there. And also Chemical Valley and then Power Supply will finish up the night. That's coming up this Friday night. You're going to want to check that out. Also on the Saturday, it's going to be a very exciting time. Once again, we're going to have the Sisters of Soul will be kicking off the night down again at 6 o'clock on the Saturday. And then The Room's going to be there. We've seen The Room here on the show before. And then Whiskey Rain will take the stage, and right after, Third Wave will be down there. And it's the Bridge Bash uh, down in Point Edward, sponsored by the Point Edward Optimist. Now, there's a free area for family, so it is family-oriented as well. And there's also, uh, as Glenn McKinnon likes to say, the uh, beer garden, if you will, the licensed area. It's only $5 to get into the licensed area, but the family area is completely free. Now, check things out during the day. Don't wait till the evening. There's going to be uh, lots of vendors down there and, and crafts, and I think they're going to have some face painting and a whole lot more. So get down to the Bridge Bash this Friday and Saturday and enjoy some great local entertainment going to be happening this weekend. All right, we've got to take another break, but when we come back, this is the exciting part that I've been looking forward to sharing with you. Paul Hofford from the band Lighthouse took the time to talk to us, and, uh, well, we want to share that special interview, but first, take a look at this.
Once again, the Lost Souls Hip Hop Summer Party going to be happening on the Duke d'Orleans. You can't have a bad time on the Duke d'Orleans. It's so much fun going on there. It's three hours down the beautiful St. Clair River and party and have a whole lot of fun. So uh, check that out. Get your tickets. $25 a piece. Located, uh, or sorry, I should say tickets available at Cheeky Monkey downtown at the corner of uh, Cromwell and Christina. Or you can give me a call here direct if you want at 490-4617 and I'll get those tickets to you so check that out. All right well as I said earlier in the show we were very excited to be talking with Paul Hoffert one of the founding members of the band Lighthouse. Of course they performed this past weekend down at Centennial Park for the Canada Day celebrations right up until the fireworks began but we had a chance to talk to Paul Hoffert and uh, it was a really neat fun interview in fact the pre-interview was exciting and then we talked some more after well you get the picture I was uh I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm very honored to be in the presence of Paul Hoffert. And we're going to show you that interview right now. And then when we come back, we're going to wrap up the show. And then we'll show you some exclusive behind-the-scenes footage that we were allowed to take of the band Lighthouse and their performance down at Centennial Park. But right now, take a look at this exclusive interview with Paul Hoffert. And then we'll be back to wrap up the show. All right, everybody, here we are once again on the show. And uh, I kind of teased a little bit last week. I wasn't 100% sure, but we're very, very excited to have Paul Hofford from Lighthouse, who's performing at Canada Day. Hello, Mr. Hofford. Thank you for joining us here in Sarnia. Great to be here in yeah. Sarnia. You just had a nice uh, trip down. and uh, Just had a great trip down. I'm looking forward to a little stroll down at, by the uh, lakefront in a little while. And tomorrow we get going and uh, with the rest of my guys. And yeah. Now, let's, let's, let's just talk briefly about that. I mean, uh, most Lighthouse fans know lots, um, but we like to get the behind the scenes. Uh, we were talking off camera there. Uh, yourself and, and Skip uh, Prokop. Did I say that right? I always Prokop. Prokop. That's right. Um, kind of the co-founders uh, of Lighthouse. But you were you were talking a little bit about somebody else that uh, sort of completed the beginning of Lighthouse. Do you want to talk about that? Absolutely. So I met Skip in New York City. I had an off-Broadway show that was running there, and Skip would uh, had the last performance that he did with his band, right. the Poppers, which were. Uh, kind of famous band at the time yep. and um, we ran into each other at the at the show at the electric circus I think it was in New York City okay. he recognized me from Toronto and we had just a couple of words the next day as luck would have it we ended up sitting next to each other on the Air Canada flight back to Toronto oh, wow. and as we started talking he told me that was his last gig with the Poppers um, he was uh, getting ready to put together Janis Joplin's new band because her manager, Albert Grossman, was also Skip's manager. Oh, okay. And uh, Albert uh, had uh, spoken to the record people that were uh, in charge of Janis Joplin's recordings, and uh, they basically felt that Big Brother and the Holding Company, which was her current band, was uh, not a good enough backup band for her recordings and for her live performances. So they hired Skip to be the new leader of the Janis Joplin band. Okay. And uh, he had phoned a guitar player that he met on the road in, um, uh, in uh, Detroit, Ralph Cole, um, and uh, was trying to get Ralph to come and join the band. But uh, when he spoke to Janis Joplin about replacing her guitar player, she wouldn't have any of it. So Skip basically said to Janis, well, if you won't, let me choose the band for you, then I really can't do what um, what your manager and your record company want, so I'm kind of out of it. So Skip passed on doing the Janis Joplin thing, and then when he met me about a week later, uh, he suggested that uh, maybe we join forces and put together a band that was this new idea that he had. So he had the idea for what became Lighthouse. The right. idea was pretty simple in those days, peace, love, groovy. Right. You take a rock and roll nucleus, you add a jazz horn section, and some uh, orchestral, symphonic kind of string, a string quartet, string quartet, right. you know, jazz horns. Which a lot of bands, of course, went on to do. Of course. A lot of bands uh, went on to do it. At the time, this was just after the first of the horn bands in rock. There were three kind of big horn bands. It was Lighthouse, Blood, Sweat, and Tears in Chicago. Right. Uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears was the first. They predated us by a couple of months, uh, and we knew the guys from, right. from uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Of course, uh, David Clayton Thomas came from the Yorkville area in Toronto. But uh, Blood, Sweat, and Tears came about it uh, from really uh, more of a jazz rhythm section as well as 
um, as the jazz horns. Okay. When Lighthouse started, we decided that we would have um, uh, jazz horn players, like improvised horns, but that the rhythmic impetus, since we had Skip Prokop as a drummer who was one of the best rock drummers right. you know, around, would be rock and roll. And then, um, and then Chicago came along, uh, and they did it, and their horn section was more, uh, more totally a rock thing. Right. And uh, they didn't use any strings. Of course, Lighthouse used strings, so that differentiated us from them uh, until, you know, maybe a couple of years later, Chicago started using strings on their, um, on their recordings, but didn't tour with them. Okay. So one of the, the main idea that Skip and I both agreed on was we both have a passion for film music, and we loved all those big film scores, those kind of, you know, especially westerns. And all the, right, okay. And all, all, all the big films where you have those vistas and the big orchestral yeah. kind, of, uh, kind of things. And we wanted to be able to have a band that could have that kind of scope musically and perform it live. Because at the time, the Beatles had just recorded a couple of albums, Sgt. Pepper and stuff like that. And, um, and they were using all of these orchestral things, especially uh, um, their, their uh, uh, producer uh, was writing all these wonderful charts for piccolo trumpets and strings right. and everything like that. And one of the reasons that the Beatles stopped touring is they couldn't reproduce their albums mm -hmm. anymore when they went out live because the albums had all of these musical resources that were not part of the Beatles. They were kind of add-ons to the Beatles. Right. So anyway, that was the idea, and uh, and we had a great start. You know, we got a great. Uh, uh, Skip had some contacts in New York, and the right. very first record company uh, we went to, we did a demo, and we went to MGM. Very quickly, it came. Back. Very quickly, yeah, like twenty uh, minutes. I'm hearing. Uh, it was. We met with them at ten o'clock in the morning, and at two o'clock in the afternoon, we wow. signed the record deal, um, which was a a big thing for a Canadian act to get their first deal with a U.S. record Certainly. company. And at the time, uh, you know, the front money, which uh, was, I think, $30,000, and, and it was basically Skip and I were Lighthouse at the time. We hadn't hired anybody else. Right. We just hired studio A lot of money back positions. then. It was, yeah, it was three or 400000 bucks, like in today's yeah. money. Yeah. And, of course, in addition to that, they agreed to fly the band down to New York, record at uh, the studio where Jimi Hendrix was, and it was great until we got a manager a couple of days later <laughs> and uh then i'll condense the story because i'll take up you know the whole half hour of your show uh, okay. with the story but uh essentially what happened is the manager uh put out he forbid the mgm people with whom we had signed our record deal to come to our sessions and he started bringing all the other record companies oh, okay. uh you know columbia records rca records uh you know um Warner and so on yeah. uh, to the recording studios and apparently they were all uh, really impressed by the fact that we had uh, great musicians and good horn players and all that kind of stuff and um, and so he did a kind of bidding war for Lighthouse although there was nothing to bid for because we were already signed <laughs> and once he got the better deal the best deal he got was with a company called RCA right. which then became BMG which then merged with Sony and right. then became Sony so as of um, as of two years, when that first record RCA record deal expired, forty years later, right. who knew we'd be alive yeah. in forty years? <laughs> but anyway, when it expired, we got a call from Sony uh, saying, "Oh, we have all your tapes. You, you own everything now, and uh, can we send a, a truck to your thing?" So somehow, Vinny, uh, you know, uh, convinced RCA to buy out MGM, and like, we didn't have to be involved once we had the yeah. manager. He did all the shenanigans, and what was what we thought was a huge deal, uh, with thirty dollars front money, thirty thousand front money, became hundreds of thousands of dollars of front money, and probably a million dollars in like a truck and a wow. sound system and all those kind of thing. It blew up. So, uh, one of the things about Lighthouse that was unusual, and that remains uh, unusual in our beginnings, is that although Skip and I individually paid dues in a sense that we came up uh, through the ranks, myself through jazz and skipped through rock and roll. 
once we started Lighthouse, Lighthouse never played bars, never started. Our yeah. first concert was at Carnegie Hall in the United States. Yeah, and that's got to, that had to be incredible. I mean, so many people want to play Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall, and your first gig was. And Carnegie that was our Hall. first gig in the United States. Sold out too. Sold out. Our yeah. first tour in the United States was the opening act for the Jefferson Airplane playing sixty thousand seat arenas, wow. and we just went across the U.S. Our first gig in Canada was in Toronto at the Rock Pile, and Duke Ellington Duke introduced Ellington. us. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we started out. And sometimes people say, you know, well, what did it feel like to, uh, you know, to get a big record deal yeah. first time out and have all this kind of heady stuff? But, you know, the whole thing was very unreal for me anyway, because the whole idea, I got involved uh, in part on a flip of a coin. Brenda, my wife, and I were planning to... Um, uh, go to Africa. I had an offer to be a, a music professor at a university in Africa. Right. And uh, and I thought, oh, it's going to be really cool. I'll go into the outback and record all these, yeah. you know, native, you know, rhythms and stuff. And and well, uh, thank goodness music. somebody said no to Janis Joplin. In fact, that's what <laughs> happened. Know? So yeah. somebody said no to Janis Joplin, and Brenda and I flipped the coin. One side of which would have been uh, take the little kids to Africa. The other side was start a rock and roll band. Yeah. And it came up. Start a rock and, and roll band. It's been a great ride ever since. And it's been a great ride ever since. So yeah. it's been uh, it's been really good. But certainly, you know, uh, when Lighthouse started, it was before bands were really into, you know, saying let's let's form a band and we'll make a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, it right. was still you know, find you know get chicks and you know, get <laughs> Is that high. That why people start a band? <laughs> yeah, get girls, get high. Uh, have a good time, sure. but both, basically it was you know we had a great passion for the music, yes. and a lighthouse was a little uh, a little different emphasis because for us the emphasis always was because you know Skip was the rudimental drum champion of North America, right? So he's a great musician, and I'm a good musician too. I mean, in in, in my own right. So the two of us selected all the other musicians based on they had to be really top musicians in the world right. at what they did and always and continuing to this day when we go on stage we're playing mostly for each other right to try to make sure and everybody's trying to not cut the other one down yeah. but play as good as we can play to, to get our respect and the respect of our fellow musicians right. and the other stuff you know the the fame and fortune is like uh, nice for sure right but not the driving force and certainly less so today yes. than it was, you know, when yeah. when you're, you know, uh, young and you're well, 20 years old. Well, 16 for yeah. you. Really I started cool. when I was 16, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and we talked uh, off camera as well uh, about Gordon Lightfoot, who we talked about last week on the show. You had a, a chance with Gordon Lightfoot, to part of a television show as well. Yeah, so Gordon Lightfoot and, uh, and I uh, got our first break together, along with Tommy Ambrose. Uh, when the CBC, which in those days uh, thought its mandate would be to try to find and promote Canadian talent. Right. Um, and uh, so they did some kind of talent search. I never knew about it because I actually never went to the talent search for me. I was a kid at my high school, Bathurst Heights <laughs> Collegiate and Vocational School in Toronto, who was a comedian and did a little bit of uh, like singing for you know Broadway musical kind of stuff. And I used to accompany him in high school. Oh, okay. So he said, well, why don't you, you know, there's an audition, the CBC, and I want to go, and uh, would you come and, like, play the piano for me? I said, sure. And it was one of those deals where I came and I played the piano for him. And then after they came up to me, they said, oh, like, you really play good. Can you do something else? Can you do this and do that? And by the end of the audition, I ended up as a regular on this TV show with Gordon Lightfoot uh, and Tommy Ambrose. And, uh, and Jerry Roshwerk, who then became Jerry Ross, right. uh, became one of the young writers that went to Hollywood and uh, wrote a show called All in the Family and many right. other, you know. So another good choice show. in life again. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't a flip of the coin, though. It wasn't a flip of the coin. It was, uh, you know, but really, I, I think if, if there's a guiding principle that I have, there's two. One is, is uh, try to find your passion in life, right. whatever it is your passion might be. Uh, and the second one is follow your gut and don't worry about uh, don't worry about making money or being famous. If you follow your passion, uh, you're going to work really hard at it. And uh, if you're lucky, 
then uh, you may have some uh, some fortune and maybe some fame. Right. And even if that doesn't happen, then you'll be doing what you like to do because you're following your passion. How bad is that? You'll at least be happy. At least right. you'll be fulfilled, right. yeah. Mr. Paul Hoffer, thank you so much for your time here. And uh, we wish you a successful show. I'm very excited to be down there, hoping to catch some more footage of Canada Day celebration. Well, I can tell you, if you're thinking of coming to Canada Day celebration in Sarnia, uh, don't think about it. Just come down because uh, certainly we're all looking forward to uh, doing a kick-ass show, as they say. <laughs> and uh, we're all going to have a really good time, play some good music, and, um, and celebrate with all of you. Very good. And we're looking to get some more footage, hopefully, down there, too. Once yeah. again, Mr. Hubbard, thank you so much for your time. And Brenda, she's in the background. She's When you say driving force, she drove, right? I'm guessing. <laughs> Absolutely. She's thank a driving force behind all good things in the universe. Thank you so much again, and all the best of luck and more okay, in the future. Great. Once again, Paul Hofford from Lighthouse here on the show. And uh, keep watching the show. We're going to have some more footage for you. I just was so excited to be in the room with Paul Hofford. And uh, we got to meet... Uh, Skip Prokop later, actually, down at the uh, um, Centennial Park Celebration, and Ralph Cole was down there, the whole band, and we got some autographs on my CDs and some, some albums. In fact, the album that they signed will be hanging up down at Cheeky Monkey Sarnia, so uh, you're going to want to check that out. I'll have that there this weekend. Thank you, Paul Hofford, and thank you, Brenda, uh, for communicating with me to uh, make this all happen, and I'm looking forward to uh, staying in touch with Paul and Brenda and all the rest of the band. It was very, very exciting for me. So thank you once again. All right. Well, uh, don't forget now, if you want to be on the show or you've got an event happening, you need to get it to me like weeks in advance only because we're getting busy, busy, busy. And that's good. I'm happy to do that. But uh, the more you uh, stay in touch with me, the better chance you have of getting here on the show. You can't tell me like two days before the event because uh, we are pre-recorded. So if you want to be on the show, send me an email to the show at davidburrows.ws and we'll make arrangements to uh, come and interview. It doesn't have to always be music in a band. It could be a comedian. It could be a play that you're doing. It could be a special event. Anything at all that's local and independent, I'm happy to get it here on the show if I can. But remember to get it to me as soon as possible and you do that once again by Send me an email to the show at davidburrows.ws. Also, don't forget, we're going to be back again next week. So please remember to keep subscribing and sharing. And on next week's show, we're going to be spotlighting an independent that uh, you may or may not have heard, probably if you've been around the music scene for a while. But we're going to be very excited, and well, you're just going to have to watch the show to find out. That's all the time I've got for you, everybody. Thanks so much for watching the show. And don't forget, share with five new friends. Have a great week and an even better weekend. We'll see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now. Up Lighthouse getting ready to go on. Of course, uh, we already had a, an interview with uh, and, uh, some more. But you guys got to be really excited. Jamie McDowell, Tony, what's his name? Smith. <laughs> Tony's angle, of course. Uh, you guys got to be really excited opening up for 
really a legend. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. What a treat! What an honor. Yeah, what an yeah. Honor. yeah. kind of a strange uh, pairing, I guess. Yeah, we're doing at least Heaven and Hell and Iron Maiden. Yeah, well, you know, and, and in talking to Paul earlier and, and uh, Skip and the other guys too, they're, they're like, you know, different genres are happening down here, but. Uh, one of the things that I see coming from the lighthouse uh, talk to them is they're like, if you've got a passion, go for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, what, what, how's the crowd out there? How was the oh, crowd out there? Great, today? great. Very Fantastic. responsive and everything. Very responsive, yep. A lot of uh, wide diversity age group. Yeah, yeah. A lot of fun. Yeah. Awesome. You guys got some more gigs coming up in Sarnia or out of town? Uh, or what's going on? the bridges. Friday yeah. night. Friday night. You doing the bridge pass? Yes, we are. Yep. Yeah. On night. the Friday. On the Friday. Okay. Nine, Nine, Friday. Thirty, what time do you go on? Something like that. 9 30, 9 45. Yeah, until I think just 8 o'clock. <laughs> be there at 8. Yeah, be there at 8. <laughs> and bring beer. Yeah. That's awesome. Bridge pass is going to be exciting. And we are doing a Duke cruise. We're doing Duke cruise on July 22nd. That's right. Oh, okay. Uh, awesome. Chemical Valley polluting the St. Clair River. That might be your birthday. It might not be. And how much are tickets for Tickets are only $20. $20. All right. Can we, you uh, can uh, come and get a hold of me. Pickers, I work at Bigger's Alley still. Bigger's Alley. They brought them back. Or any of yep. us band members. Uh, yeah, get a hold of any, anybody in the band. Get a hold of Dave. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. We'll yeah, put that up on, uh, put it up on the screen. Yeah, show. perfect. Uh, Jamie and Tony, thanks so much for your Thank time. You. Thank All you, the Dave. best. And very exciting for you to be opening for a while. Oh, we love it. That's cool, man. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome stuff. All right, keep watching the show. We're going to have some more footage. Canada Day Cheers. events. Bye-bye. Uh, Happy Canada Day. Yeah, Canada right. Day. Thanks.